Four minutes until showtime. Three minutes until showtime. Two minutes until showtime. Project accomplishments. That's the project. Straight out accomplishments. All right, come on, baby. One minute until showtime. I need another one. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Love Talk Radio. <coughs> Alright, goddamn. 
damn it. Let's get started with this shit, because I got a whole bunch I want to tell you about today. Accomplishments. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be just talking about some shit, and I wish you motherfuckers would call in so we can kick it, but I ain't going to hold my breath. But, uh, shit. When I accomplish shit, I'm telling you, my head swells up this big. I'm just, you know, I've accomplished a lot of things in my life, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, all this shit, six, seven, eight, actually longer than that ago. I just implemented it five or six years ago. I had to give birth to this idea and I had to rear this idea in my mind until it got to where I could actually, you know, show it. And now that I'm at this point, I, I couldn't be fucking happier. So, and plus, I, I want to sh shout out to all you motherfuckers who've been helping me along the way. <laughs> Some of you be asking to get into Sidewalk University. And since it's on Facebook, uh, it, it has to be a group. But then when I uh, investigate these motherfuckers, some of them be in like a hundred other groups. Dude, uh, you know, if you haven't really bought the course, why would you want to add another group to your list of groups that you're already in? Shit. I don't want nor do a motherfucker qualify to be in Sidewalk University just because they want to. You got to have some of this shit, you know, you, let's say you bought a couple of parts to the course, or maybe even just one part to the course. You're you going to know something about a little game, something. You can pick up something. Then you can get into Sidewalk University and learn what you missed. You know, I didn't tell you this shit, you know, like this from the start. Because this is how you separate the real from the fake. You don't tell everybody shit. You know, you just let them come to you. And what they bring you is going to let you see everything about them. If I promise you would get all this shit and that makes you come, in the fucking end, I ain't going to be dealing with nothing but a lot of fake motherfucking fools who, who want it, what the end results offer. The fucking way I go about it, talking shit, you know, making you really want it or not, I get the motherfuckers who really willing to take a real chance on a nigga like me. And with that chance, you're going to get all I have. I, everything I have to offer, you get me. And I offer tangible shit. Shit that I can be checked on. Now, I'm, how can you check a nigga that's quoting Plato? I mean, I, how can you do it? How, how can you, you know, check a nigga who, who, who's quoting the Bible? I mean, shit. Me, personally, I wouldn't follow some motherfucker that I couldn't check. I don't follow people anyway. But what I'm saying is, why would a motherfucker who's trying to, you know, lead people today quote Plato? <laughs> From centuries ago. Because they lying to you. Because they only want to say something that you can relate to. So you can think you're relating to them. I don't quote shit. I just don't. Because I ain't trying to sell you a motherfucker. Well, I am selling you some goddamn uh, sidewalk university shit. But I ain't trying to sell nothing to you, man. I'm not no snake oil type motherfucker. You know, if you quoting the Bible and Plato... You can't say I'm old. 
motherfuckers be trying to say I'm old, but they be quoting Plato and in the Bible. This is, this is, this is some really old statements. I ain't saying I disagree with them. I'm just saying what they got to do with us right now. I ain't talking about the Bible. I'm talking about that Plato shit, really. So what I'm really talking about is if, if you want to accomplish things, you need the answers to these questions that I'm finna ask you. Because you, you just can't accomplish something because you say you're going to accomplish it. These are questions you need to ask yourself to get that power. What's up, man? I'm, a, I'm doing a video. What's happening? Nigga, you at the front door? Hold on, man. Hey, you guys, hold on. I got to go let Tay in. I got to get back up here. I got him on the video thing still. <laughs> hey, y'all, now. now <laughs> this is the cold part about this. You know, I'm an old nigga. Hey, 3 one I'm going to get you in a minute. Uh, I'm an old nigga. This nigga older than me. And look how sharp this motherfucker is. Hey, take come over here so these niggas can see <laughs> my nigga. <laughs> my nigga. That nigga be sharp every motherfucking day. <laughs> hey, hey, man, I know you. What you finna do? Go get your hair in? I just came to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, hey, man, let me let me kick it with my niggas for a minute. Right. Hey, hey, you got move that thing out the chair, Tay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, no, for real, but what I'm telling y'all is really serious. Because power is a motherfucker. And most people go their entire lives without experiencing any other goddamn shit. Now, if you want to reach your full potential as a powerful person, <clears throat> here's what the fuck you got to do. The number one thing is learn who the fuck you are and what you about. Because you guys be fooling yourself, faking you a rapper, you you this, you that, you all these things, but you, you're really none of them. My confidence scores will show you how to do the shit I'm talking about. And the second thing you need to do, after learning who you are, tell you, nigga, I'm breathing different. You got me nervous in here, nigga. <laughs> My nigga got me nervous. I just breathe it all hard and shit. Man, this nigga. <laughs> anyway, after learning who you are, you got to develop a set of principles and boundaries that you can't violate under any circumstances. Then and only then will you be in a position to pursue greatness. Because me and my nigga, that's what we did. We, we once we knew who we was, we had to take that we have to go show everybody or what? Nigga gotta show everybody, everybody everywhere, and that's just how it go. Now, principles are the things that you obey and honor in pursuit of your goals. Now, boundaries are a little more technical. But, but they are the things you use to stay within the principle you developed. In today's world, <laughs> we'll have your ass following a goat. Long as that goddamn goat got access to YouTube and, and, and can do some shit you can understand, you're going to follow that motherfucker. Does it matter that most of the motherfuckers you listen to today, the so-called gurus, have no pass. H have you noticed they're lacking credibility other than the fact you like his quotes? <laughs> I I'm sure you'll point out 
you know, uh, him a limo, you point him out, excuse me, in, in front of the limo, in front of the sign, and everybody think it was like this guru's car or he's being chauffeured around. Y'all just don't know. For suckers, that make him a credible dude. But do you have any verified facts from verified motherfuckers on that food? You have his friends, I guess, and people who support him. But do you have any real facts about his exploits in in the world? Take claim game, I claim game. We got proof. You don't have proof about these motherfuckers you be listening to. Therein lies my point. Real niggas know. Fake niggas quote. A real nigga ain't going for shit unless it's on his menu. A real nigga ain't going ain't gonna let no motherfucker say shit about him that ain't true. A real nigga have have info that can help kids, teens, and adults because he's taking his goddamn life experiences and translating them into helpful info. A real nigga don't need motherfuckers co-signing his shit. A real nigga needs motherfuckers who don't agree with him. Not agreeing is going to promote this real nigga to stand on his strong beliefs. I mean, excuse, excuse me, stand strong on his beliefs because he's a real nigga. A real nigga spell his name with two D's at the end for a double dose of reality. All you suckers can try if you like, but you can't fuck with Bud. <laughs> I'm too real. You know, hey, hey, you guys got to hold on one more second. Hey, nigga, I know you know I'm just sit up in here and not have nothing to say. You can have something to say, nigga. Nigga, come. You, yeah, you, don't, you don't want to say that, nigga? Say. You got hella shit to say. What the <laughs> fuck you talking about? <laughs> that nigga's just trying to be, be nice. In any goddamn way. Motherfuckers, some dudes be like discovering that they gay. I mean, I ain't against no gay motherfuckers. They listen to shit, you know, that's said or spoken, and they identify with the gayness in the statements. And and if 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 <laughs> if there's no gay gayness in the statement, they think fuck that shit. But if there is gayness in the statement, they gravitate to the goddamn statement. And more, they gravitate to the motherfucker that's making the statement. That explains that fake guru shit that's how they get their followers because you know they be saying faggot shit you motherfuckers be faggots and shit not faggot excuse me i'm sorry y'all ain't no faggots i'm just talking shit now but, but what i'm saying is you guys be tripping and you just follow motherfuckers because you like what he said fuck it i tell you stuff that's true period and you like the truth in it or you don't I ain't saying shit because it's popular. I don't give a fuck if I'm popular or not. God damn it, 310, you a cold motherfucker because you still there. I, I got to reward you for being that motherfucking shit. Bro. You know I'm waiting for a real to be heard. And if I got a question, man. Come on, man. I, I, hey, you got to hit me after this here so I can give you my audio book, bro. Oh, okay. I got something else for you, goddammit. Come on, what's your question? Something about him and his budget. It was so real, man. But I, man, 
Hey, 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 a trick, uh, a, a trick, motherfucker. They do have a pussy budget. They they, <laughs> they figure it into their motherfucking expenditures. They might call it uh, uh, activities or whatever, fun activities. I don't, they don't say pussy budget. But what I'm saying is if it's 600 he going to spend this month or whatever he going to spend, that motherfucker put it in his budget. That's why he can do it every motherfucking time he want to do it because he didn't budget it. That's how I go. Hey, that's 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 what's up, bro. That's why I'm here. Hey, I got a couple of more people, man. I can get these questions. Six, seven, eight. What's happening? Yo, what's up, Ron Bud? Nothing. What's happening with you? Yo, this is Don Perrion, a long time listener. I heard um, I heard Hollywood Sean K came in, so I got two of the best in the world. So I just had to give a call just to give you a shout. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what, man. Uh, Don Perry on. That's cool, man. You know, I had a great friend. Yo, I, I, Go ahead. Yeah, you used to give me shout outs. I used to be in your comment section a few years back. So I just let you know that, you know what I mean? I'm still listening to your game. You know what I mean? I'm on that Abadabadabit. On that Abadabadabit. You know yeah, I, mean? yeah, I know it. <laughs> I ain't fucking with, fuck with the kill, but I'm on that Abadabadabit. You know what I mean? Hey, you got to be on it, baby. That's what's up. And, 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 and here's another thing that's so that's so mystical. I don't really have a question, but it comes in like when the call is asking you a question, it really opens my mind the way how you answer their question. So their answer is kind of like my answer. You know what I mean? Hey, that, you, 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 if you pay attention, you're going to get something from everything that's being said. The questions asked, the answers given. And I tell my students, man, just because somebody else asked the question don't mean the answer ain't for you. So you got to pay attention. Everybody, we got to pay attention. You, you never know. You get put up on shit paying attention. All right, man, that's cool, Don Perrion. All right, please stay up. Man. You know it. So check game. You guys got to understand this kind of goddamn shit. Uh, people want to deal with what's real. But people don't really want what's real. They just want to deal with it. That's why they want to read it. That's why they want some kind of goddamn way for you to do it for them. Man, you know, I already know this shit. So what I'm saying is I recognize that shit in my students. And one of the goddamn reasons they so sharp is I don't do shit for them. I tell them all about it. I tell them things about it. And you make your own mind up as far as how you're going to handle this assignment. I ain't explain. I explain it, yeah, but I ain't giving you no hints. You can't use none of the shit I say. Because I believe in you. If you don't believe in you, that's on your motherfucking ass. Hey, 754, what's up? What's up, bud? None. What's up, Tay? Tay, Tay left. Just call me and say, uh, Tay left? Tay left, man. Damn. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I wanted to say, uh, yeah, tell Tay that we've been, um, shit, we've been, I know, I've been, Hey, wait, man. Something's going on with your phone, and, and I'm not hearing you. You're going to have to call back in or something. All right, you guys. The thing that I'm talking about is is the realness and in, in, in what I be trying to tell you. I know I talk shit. I know I am not likable in that regard, but I do it for a reason. 
You don't want no motherfucker saying shit so you can accept it. And I ain't doing it. I say shit where you damn near don't want to accept it. Because the truth hurts, you motherfuckers. And you need to understand that. Don't be mad at me for providing you the reasons that you motherfuckers be following and doing stupid shit. When you don't have to, you don't even have to buy my shit. If you paid attention and you got the message, you would learn hella shit I teach. Because all I'm doing when I'm on this goddamn shit is teaching. And I have a lot of ways to teach. Because I'm a motherfucker, period. I got a lot of things to teach and I got a lot of ways to teach. And then motherfuckers learn like a motherfucker from me. Because I teach them how to apply what they learned over here to all that's over there. You know why they can do it? Because I tell them to do it right now. You ain't going to learn this goddamn shit and, and use it next year. Fuck that. Learn the shit, use it right now. Learn it today, use it tonight. That's bud. 209, what's happening? Hey, 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 how you doing, bud? I'm good, bro. What's going on? Oh, man, yeah. I just want to do a follow-up on uh, some information you gave me about uh, a week or two ago or maybe a month. <clears throat> what was that? Uh, you told me uh, about passive aggressiveness. About uh, passive aggressively getting what you want, right? Yeah. Man, it took me a minute to figure it out. Like 24 hours, and uh, man, I got that, and I appreciate that. Because that shit real, ain't it? Man, it's so real. It, it gets you what you want, you know? Hey, 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 and, and the person that's doing it don't even know you didn't got them to do it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know. Hey, hey, I you, bro. hey, I know you do, but listen, they don't even know know you've done it, and they feel like they a monster. <laughs> hey, hey, bro, you just getting it. Wait till you've been using it for a year or two. Never, not. I mean, not right. never, not use it, but but don't depend on that shit. Just have that in your motherfucking. Uh -huh. Uh, a waste man or, or in your toolbox. Yeah, part of your arsenal. That's right. All right, bro. Appreciate you. Stay up. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, that's what I was just saying. All you motherfuckers be wanting shit, but you don't listen to what the fuck I'm telling you because you think whatever you think. This brother happened to do what I motherfucker said and you heard him what he just said. I'm not saying he got some special attention. He called in like everybody else when we got the kick and then the shit came up and, and I explained it and evidently it, it made sense to him. But what really makes sense is the same shit I told him if you would have overheard me telling it to him and then you would have listened to it and tried it it would have worked for you too. There's no, this is not some special fucking shit. This is just shit you don't know. How do you think any motherfucker that really learned this shit get to be a real pimp? They, they wasn't born pimps. The motherfuckers learned it. And the ones that learn it right be the big pimps. And the ones that learn some of it be the little suckers. That's just what's going on. That's how life is. This is why a motherfucker got to understand. You know, I ain't gonna go, I ain't gonna say that no pimping ass motherfucker today could match my pimp. That, that's some bullshit, I'm sure. There's plenty. But what I will say is can you see why all these fools want to match wits with me? My legacy is that of a monster. You hear stories, and they're verified by documented shit. 
from real men, and most importantly, from real OG pimps. Do you see any of them motherfuckers wanting to match wits with me, even though they still down and I ain't? And, 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 and <laughs> Have any, of these, have any of these motherfuckers that you listen to, that you be believing, have they ever got at me? I'm My shit is wide open. Them motherfuckers can call in and get at me. Any one of them. Them motherfuckers ain't fucking with me. Because they know I'm real. Shit, whatever the fuck I'm saying out of my mouth, I'm going to say it right to that motherfucker and whoever the fuck call in. And I'm going to defend it. You ain't sitting me down. You ain't shutting me up. You ain't doing nothing but going to get ranked. That's all you're going to do. So, if I'm so fucking outdated, why do them motherfuckers keep fucking with me? Won't we'll match wits? Shit. When I was in the streets, ain't no fucking way I'm gonna try to match wits with a retired pimp. Shit. Even if we had words, I'd bow to that nigga. I only wanted to match wits with motherfuckers who was killing them currently. Motherfuckers who was pimping like a motherfucker right now. I matched wits with them. Shit, I didn't kill any one of them motherfuckers. And they didn't kill my motherfucking ass, which meant to whoever it was and me, we was pimps. And we didn't need to go through that kind of goddamn bullshit. And whatever doubt you have about what I'm saying is the same amount of doubts you have in your goddamn self. You can't believe the truth because you can't believe your own motherfucking thoughts. You've been lying to yourself for so many years till you just take for granted whatever you think. You're lying so you don't believe it. You don't believe what the fuck you think. Perception is what I'm talking about. The way you perceive or, or, or what you perceive of yourself is immensely important. But I'm sure it's not to you. Before I was a pimp, I was a carpenter. I decided to quit being a carpenter and to be a pimp. Now, does that mean I supposed to forget the shit I learned in carpentry? Fuck no. I just stopped building houses and started building stables for hoes. <laughs> a lot of you motherfuckers don't know. A fake motherfucker will compare himself with just about anything that he already know he ain't. Th that's what they do. I never compare myself because the moment you compare yourself, you already know you lost. Why would you compare yourself? You ain't going to compare yourself with somebody you better than. 510, what's up? What's up, man? You a legend. Salute to you, man. I got a quick question. Come on. You talking about the Alpha Dabba, right? And how it helped you maneuver through life, through hostile situations, right? Yeah. Uh, back in L.A., I remember you touching upon the situation with the Crips and some pushing up on y'all, man, uh, my conception in them, and y'all was able to, you know, uh, to diplomatically handle that. Can you touch upon that real quick? My conception, you know, he, he, he crippled and shit. And um, I had, uh, he, he had a rose, I had a rose. And they was the same color, same two-tone color. His was a little darker, but, but you know, they looked alike. And we, shit was um, confusing people. But then, you know, me and him would see each other and we'd speak, blah, blah, blah. And, and, but, but he was crippling shit. 
So I, I mean, I'm, I ain't really trying to get him out of his car or nothing like that. I, mean, I know he fucked up, but but the nigga was, a, you know, the head of the Crips, and they was, you know, trying to bulldog motherfuckers on on the street on on on, on Sunset. They never really yeah. came at me or Tay, but but you know they was doing some shit, and Tay ended up knocking this nigga off, and. <laughs> And the nigga, you know, Tay, whatever, you know, that nigga get upset a lot of times. But the nigga Mike was in, in his Rolls Royce. And I, me and Tay in my car, we was at 7-Eleven. And they got the, you know, the shit got a little heated. And Mike said, well, man, why don't you just come on over here and get in the car? We'll go right now. And <laughs> that motherfucking Tay... <laughs> That motherfucker Tay get ready to grab the door and open the door. I grabbed that nigga arm. I say, nigga, I was over to, I seen this with my own eyes, nigga. This nigga was lifting weights. He was bench pressing. And this nigga laid on the on the bench press. And they gave this nigga some weights. And it didn't have no 50s or 75s on it. It had some train wheels on it. <laughs> that nigga bench pressed that shit. I say, Tay, don't you think that nigga didn't practice <laughs> beat the motherfucker's ass in that car, nigga? <laughs> uh, that nigga heard me. My conception heard. <laughs> my, my conception heard me telling Tay that shit. That nigga, say, that nigga started laughing. I looked over there at that nigga. That nigga started laughing. He said, he said, man, fuck that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that shit was funny as a motherfucker. Hey, but I seen my conception. I seen him do that. We was doing some music shit. And in some kind of way, I need to hook up with him. And I went to that nigga house. And all them niggas, you know, they, be, they was around that nigga. You know, <laughs> you know, I act like it ain't shit. Plus, hey, my car was red. <laughs> You know, them niggas don't like no motherfucking red. I pulled up in front of that nigga's house. <laughs> and I go in there and them niggas all yoked up. You know, and this nigga lay, just laying on the, on, I mean, he was sitting on the damn uh, bench press thing. And, and the dudes was bringing the weights to put to put on put on the bar. And, and they, man, this yoke ass nigga, two of them. They like taking these big old weights, like they all their muscles showing why they carried it. And you can tell they kind of, you know, putting this shit on here. It ain't light. So <laughs> this nigga laid down. I said, nigga, you finna push that shit? <laughs> he, he didn't say shit. He, he just did his shoulders. <laughs> and, and, and the dude said, we gonna spot you. He said, man, you I, Okay, I don't need no spots. You know that shit. That nigga pushed that shit twice. Two times. Damn. He pushed it twice. I said, God, nigga. Now, this was before Tay had this little run in with him. <laughs> I, I told him, nigga, I will never fuck with you. You, you probably pick me up and throw me across the street. You know, I had to make a joke of it, but I'm telling you, that nigga. If he was crippled, he was the strongest crippled motherfucker I ever seen in my life. Period. <laughs> and I don't know if you ever seen that nigga, but but that nigga got yokes too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me be quiet talking about Mike Conception. He he was all, he was all right, brother man. Yeah. Much love to you and Shantae, Rosebud. Respect, man. You know, it'd be cool. <laughs> See, stuff like that. See, this is why, not why, you don't, you don't know me like that, but what I'm saying is shit like that is why you believe me. If that's the case, that's why uh, you don't really question what I'm telling you as far as believability. Because we got people calling in like that. 
you know, and, and, and talking about people like Mike Conception, these is real people that was out there that got history. So my thing is, you just don't know. My thing is when you say something about me, say something that's news. I mean, say something no one knows about me so you could really be talking some shit. I mean, that might be hard to do. Because I tell everything about me as I'm doing it. You know, I just respect this game. And when the motherfucker represents, should we liable to be cool? And a lot of times, that's how you meet another motherfucker. Running, have some problems. When you, I'm, I'm serving you or you serving me the news. You got them out of state plates, so that must be your bitch I got. And instead of arguing, this game take over. And me and this motherfucker end up getting cool. I mean, that didn't happen many times. Stop letting the only time you 100% confident be when you think you need to take a shit or, or you need to piss. That's the only time you fucking confident. 100%. No. Believe it or not, Something like that, which is nothing, is, is, is just like a part of life, shitting and pissing. You don't think anything of it because you're confident about it. What if you thought about shit like that? I believe me, I may get that rush. From some shit that's new or whatever, that the exciting feeling. But I don't think about the shit if I'm if I supposed to do it. I mean, I, if I know what to do, I'm gonna you know think of that shit. But but what I'm saying is I ain't thinking about if I can do it or not. I already know I can't do it, but that don't stop me from doing it. And when I do it, I'm surprised as fuck. But who, that's life. That's the way it's supposed to be. Why you got to be 100% told how to do something? Fuck that. No. Most of you don't even know if you should eat when you're hungry. You don't know because some motherfucker told you for your health you should only eat at this time or that time. I don't know what you think, but who in the fuck know what worked better in my life than me? You? Shit. That's an honor, bro. The, I, I, if you think like that and you think I can tell you some shit, but I don't want, I don't want you. And I, I surely don't know you better than you know your goddamn self. And, and if I do, what the fuck is that saying about you? Don't you need to get busy? What is confidence? Hey, listen. On the real, you can take this simple test. And I tell you, I will tell you if you pass or fail. And after you take this test, now be ready because I'm going to ask you some questions. And you're the only one going to hear your answers, so you can answer. But starting right now, you're going to have five seconds to answer each one of these questions. Now, the first question. No, wait, stop. They're not actually questions. They're situations. And I want to know what you would do. That's why I'm saying questions, because the last thing I'm going to say after each one of them is what would you do? So they're not really questions. They're, they're really situations. All right, the first one, you riding down the street and you see a woman at the bus stop. What do you do?
Okay, you should have already answered it. You're about to be interviewed for a job you want. You don't think you're fully qualified, but you believe you can do the job. What do you think about while you wait? All right. You on your way home from work and your girlfriend calls or your wife calls and asks you to stop and get her some tampons. What would you say? Now, I know you motherfuckers failed. 610, I'm going to get you in a minute. I know you motherfuckers failed and the only way you will help yourself with this test is by being honest. Now, if you thought about any one of those questions before you answered it, you're not as confident as you think and definitely could use reinforcement in that area. Those should all be no-brainer answers. The first answer does not matter, just as the last answer does not matter. That's why I know your motherfucking ass not confident. Because each one of you wanted to get the correct answer. In each of those scenarios, you should do whatever the fuck you want to do. No brainer. There is no right or wrong. It's only what you think or want. That's confidence. Now, 610, let me get at you. How are you doing? I'm good. Mark, what's... Right out of uh, PA. Okay, what's happening? Ain't much. I'm, you know me representing uh, the smoker section, man. We'll just call in and I, I heard what you were talking about as far as projecting accomplishments. The smoker section? You the dude I did an interview with? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Go ahead, man. Peace to you, man. Peace to you. You know, I'm, I'm still checking in with you. I'm still watching your show. Ain't nothing changed. Okay. Good. What, what what was you saying? I was I was listening to the part where you were saying how most times you a hundred percent people you know you know you're hundred percent confident when you got to take a shit you know you're hundred percent confident when you got to take a piss why aren't you hundred percent confident about the other things and that's such a that was such a deep part right there because that right there could just send you on so many adventures just to think about if it was to do everything that you thought and everything that you thought you, you know, you was 100% sure of and you sure that you was going to act on it. That was such a beautiful point, man, because it made my mind think of all the adventures that you would be on and the places you would go and how you could build a reputation and, and, and be known. So that's a really great part, man. And I just want to check in with you and say salute. And I thank you once again. And I'm, we still here. We still riding with you. All right, bro, for sure. Thank you, man. Hey, what's your name again? All right, baby. My name is Mark. Mark, okay, all right, all right, man, I got you. Smoking, hey, hey, you guys, listen to listen to Mark's podcast. Uh, no, hey, hey, Mark, give yourself a shout out. Oh man, uh, thank you, bud. I appreciate that for everybody listening. Uh, my show on YouTube is the Smokers Section. Uh, S M O K A H S Section. And we just chop it up, and uh, you can you can see a great interview that me and Rosebud did a couple weeks ago. And uh, man, I thank you so much. Uh, y'all follow us on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all the socials, man. Thanks a lot. All right, for sure. Uh, four one four, what's up with you, bro? Four one four, are you there? Yeah. What's happening? Hey, don't take this in a bad or contentious way, but it was a time that you said that you missed out on catching this hoe or that hoe because you didn't put that extra time in. And you said the weight, weight, like the shift is too much weight. And if we wait, we're making a mistake. So my question is, why is waiting a bad idea if you yourself said that you would have caught more hoes if you would have put that extra time in? Bro, I ain't taking that the wrong way. And I don't know why you thought you had to say that because you ain't doing nothing but asking a question. And that, when I was did what I did, was when I didn't know what I know. You know, if I would have, if I would have put no time in with the bitch, I would have still had. I remember this little fucking Filipino bitch. She was fine as a motherfucker, and this bitch could get no. I, I couldn't tell her of an amount of money that she couldn't get, and she was she'd be on that track, but she was a needy.
fucking motherfucking broad. You know, um, the bitch would go out, and, and you know, at first I told her, that, you know, get. She said, "How much you want me to get?" So she would go out, and I, I told her five. Just bring me five hundred. You know, I'm thinking I'm telling her a lot. Man, three hours later, that bitch in the house. Now this was when I first got her. So I'm th and she just want to be with me. So I'm thinking right now today, since she you know just went out, I, I'll take her. I'll go buy her something. Let her spend a little time with me. So we do that. The next day, I told her I need eight hundred. But five hours, the bitch came in. She wanted to be with a nigga again. So I'm saying, God damn, bitch. You know, you know, she she just wanted, she liked me. So the third day, I told her, bitch, she got you know put some some hours in. I don't really, I ain't really sending you out for a certain amount of money. You got to put a certain amount of hours in. She said, Well, how many is that? And, and I, I told that bitch, 12 hours. That motherfucker been saying, 12 hours? And I thought she was going to say something stupid. But the bitch say, oh, I should have $2,000 by then. I said to myself, God, this bitch is crazy. But every time the bitch came in, she wanted to be with me and would give me some kind of goddamn problem if I told her, I, I got other hoes, bitch. I can't be, you know, slaying up under your stupid ass. So, so when I left this last time, and it got to the point where I told it myself, I ain't fucking with this bitch. So if she do this shit up in San, I took it to San Francisco. We was in L.A. I took it to San Francisco, and and if she do this shit up here, I'm a leaver, <laughs> and that's what I did. <laughs> that bitch did that shit, and I left her. But if I would have put time in and broke her from that shit, she wouldn't have been like that. I learned that. I learned how to, because, see, I didn't do shit I didn't want to do. Especially at first, bitch. I don't give a fuck how much money you got. If you ain't got it like I want it, then you can't even pay me. All the hundreds, all the fifties, all the twenties, all the tens, all the fives, and you can keep the ones. And I tell them bitches better be facing the same motherfucking way. And slap my palm when you give me that money. <laughs> you, know, you know, I had rituals. Them motherfuckers was crazy about me, man. That's why they was crazy, because I had rituals. But, you is, is that it, bro? I guess so. I got it written. Okay. Check it out. Wait a minute, bro. What'd you say? Did I cut you off? 414, did I cut you off? Yeah. Huh? 414, did I cut you off? Or was you done? No. Did you hear me? No, I can't hear you. I heard that. All right, this is my own question. You remember when you said the only time a real nigga needed a jug was when he didn't have a hoe? So my question is, how many jugs he got to ask for and how many times he got to go hold his view to tell a nigga that he don't got no pimp in him? Well, I ain't really finna tell the nigga no shit. Oh, take nigga, you scared me, nigga. <laughs> I thought you already had left. No, I was just downstairs, man, smoking the joint, man. Man, man, I thought you had already left. A couple cats want to talk to you, man. <laughs> Going over, man. Get ready to uh, do your thing. Uh. No, Thursday night football, nigga. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, nigga, be, hey, I'm gonna call you, man. Uh, I didn't know you was downstairs, <laughs> man. I thought you had left. <laughs> All right. Hey, bro, bro, bro. Yeah, what? Hey, um, ask Tay this question, too. I don't know what he thinks, too. Tay! Uh, What's the question, man? How many judges you got to ask for? And how many times you got to go hold this for you to tell a nigga that he don't got no pimp in there? Well, my, my answer to that, man, is this right here. You know, when it comes to the game, you know, shit, we keep each other's up. We keep each other up, man, you know, until they come up. Now, you know, that's how we do it. Now, <laughs> hey, 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 now, I don't know what you really asking, except for sound like, sound like you saying that whoever you talking about, uh, really you think ain't got no pimp well, I'm saying, when you asking for a jug, a, a, a nigga like me to take, we know if you need it or not. 
And, and, and what I'm saying is if you need it and you qualify to ask this, you getting it no matter how many times. But we expect you to come up. And when you do, you ain't got to pay us back, but you got to, you know, pass it on. Ain't that a bitch? Take hey, that. Do you agree with that? I agree. Yeah. That, that's okay. what it is, man. It, you know, it ain't, it ain't no limit to what the fuck you can do, man, because we, 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 we all in it together. You know, even if you got my bitch before. You know, and, and, and you need a jug, you got it coming for me, nigga. You down with this pimping? That's how I go. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, bro. Be cool. <laughs> oh, hey, Tay, man. Tay, I'm sorry, man. I swear I thought you was gone. No, man. I'm going to holler at you. Man. All right, man. Be cool. Right. Okay, now listen, you guys. <laughs> what I'm saying is this. They're, they're going to be, I, I know this, there's, there are going to be many women who don't or won't like me. And I say, so fucking what? I, I don't care. All I want is one to like me. So let's say the odds are you got to go through 150 bitches before you get one to like you. Do you want to take, because you only talk to one bitch a day, do, do, do you want to take 150 days? Okay, you talk to two bitches a day. Do you want to take 75 days? Okay, you talk to three bitches a day. You want to take 50 days? Bro, what I'm saying, you got to understand, this is why this nigga will give me a jug every motherfucking time. Because he know I'm down and dirty every day. Multiple women. I just ain't came up yet. That's what a jug is about. A jug is not about just giving some nigga that ain't got no money some money. A jug is about you respect what he doing and you giving him something to get him over to the next time he see me. Or the next time he need one. And if you're a real nigga, you can get jugs from a bunch of niggas. But, but you really don't want to. But you can. So what I'm saying to you guys, <laughs> you got to understand, I, 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 when the broad don't like me, I, I don't like them either. And, and when I tell you guys about a scenario that I was in, the whole scenario is a lesson. Just like my previous videos explain the importance of uh, having the attitude I have. Just in case you took the short bus to school, you want to be as close to what I'm doing just like the way you want it to be like Mike. And then you want to be like Kobe. Then LeBron. You want, I, I put my name in there. I ain't no athlete. I'm saying you want to be like us because we're all winners. We're just winners. We're all on the winner's side. And you know damn well you want to win. You got to stop trying to make the stupid shit you be thinking correct. It's not. That's why you're not winning. You got to change what you think. And I tell you what. From now on, you think the shit you think is right. So much so. Until it makes you the shit. Now. Go out. Anywhere. With that shit you think. And snag you one of them fresh fine ass motherfucking bitches out there. there ain't no time limit. Uh, You could do whatever you want. Go wherever you want. However you want. As long as that shit you talking is what you use. Now. Let me tell a motherfucker from Sidewalk University to do that. Let me tell that motherfucker to use what you learn, go out and execute it, and then, well, how would I know? Because them motherfuckers record it. That's right. They record themselves in action so I can critique it. 
Yeah. Then I show them what to do. I don't care if you you fuck don't you know wanna or maybe you don't have the money. I don't know. But what I'm saying is fuck it. The early bird catches the goddamn worm. You ever hear of that saying? Do you accept what it means? Sayings are fucking important, if you understand. Sayings are a secret language that conveys different things to people of the same nature. The early bird catches the worm means the same thing as nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream. Both of them are to promote you to get off your ass and do something. Instead of complaining about shit or hoping some shit automatically happens. The next time you hear a saying like you can't see the forest for the trees, it's telling you how to get past something. The shit is right in front of you. What does you ain't worth the salt to go in your bread mean? See, we need to know everything that will allow us to catch, allow, uh, allow, excuse me, allow us to be on top of our conversation. And most of that shit is how you perceive shit, how you interpret your accomplishments. Ain't no woman gonna cross her legs in front of me without me assigning a meaning to it. And the cold part about it is I, Tell that motherfucker what, what crossing her leg means to me. Because I tell her, baby, God dang, crossing your legs, you must be, you know, want me to compliment on the way you be grooming yourself. Because when you did it, all I could see was how you overall groomed. <laughs> but I'm just saying shit. My trip is to come at the bitch. And she don't read, she know it, but she don't know it. Cause what I'm saying ain't what she used to hear. I'm not going to, you know, give her a compliment. Like most of you motherfucking squares would do and talk about her fucking legs. That would be playing right into the bitch hand. I'll take it further than that and talk about her clothes. I direct and I drive the conversation. That's why I notice everything. And I assign a meaning to it, to every goddamn move she make. And when she's moving, she's talking to me. Period. That just helped me focus on catching her motherfucking ass. Because so, I got to watch those movements. And as I speak the language that she's telling me, I'm getting everything from her moves. As I speak it, she's mesmerized. Simply by the things I'm saying, because it's not, you know, setting her up on some kind of pedestal because I want her pussy. I'm going to make this bitch want my dick. Shit. I say that to her. Well, maybe I don't say that to her. But I make moves so she can get that motherfucking feeling. That motherfucker don't think I ain't going to grab my nuts while I'm talking to the goddamn bitch. I'm going to do all kind of goddamn shit. I make her start thinking about what I think. <laughs> and she's going to start predicting what she thinks her blinking eyes means to me. Because I didn't told her every move you make is telling me something. And, and now, oh, you see me blink my eyes. I bet they tell me. See, now nah, that, my friends, is when you got them. It's a wrap. She's on your level thinking about you the way you want her to think about you. <laughs> Let me ask you something. How are you like and not like this statement? Now, if you're a zebra, but you want to be a horse, you can dress like a horse. Someone can train you to prance like a horse trot like a horse and everything like a horse but no matter what there's going to come a time when the zebra in you come out and then what 
Now, you're like this statement because like the zebra, you're being taught to do something you're not used to doing. Gaining and using confidence is not natural anymore. It used to be natural. So you have to be taught to be confident. Now, unlike the zebra, what you're being taught can actually become you. But no matter what you teach that zebra, it's going to always be a zebra. And I'm just going to call it like I see it, period. When I go out, I have done my daily activities, hygiene, dress, and I'm ready to hit the streets, you know, and I see what I can see. And when I want, now just bear with me. What I'm saying is I don't do anything to change my appearance. I, I make it my appearance acceptable. Now, when a woman walk out the door, can she say that? Everything we say to a woman we meet is based on what we perceive from what we see. What can we perceive if everything we see is false or a lie? She's changed her hair. That's not her hair. She's changed her eye color. Those aren't her eyes. Her eyebrows aren't shaped like that. She got on heels. She ain't that tall. Her fucking complexion don't look like that. Look at all that makeup on. Her shape ain't even like that. She got on this goddamn girdle and shit. The shape of her titties ain't even like that. This got on this whatever shapely bra. And any other feature I would see when I meet her is false. Yet, as Crick, Chris Rock said, the first thing she gonna say out her mouth is she deserve an honest man. <laughs> this is why there's so many fucking one night stands going on tonight, today. Of course, truthfulness is a necessity in the relationship, but when I meet you and fuck the shit out of you, I would like to at least think I fucked the woman I met. I don't want to wake up and be a totally different bitch in the bed. I don't want to see you a few months into the relationship and you turn out to be a motherfucker with no morals, no scruples, which is why you wanted me to believe I was falling for the woman I met. See, they, they, they dress up to look this way. Ooh, she she looks like a motherfucker that you know I would want to fuck with. And then when you get them home and they take all that shit off, they ain't that bitch. See, I want to wake up with who I went to bed with, like you do. I want her to be the same woman I met six months from today. Now, on to another subject. How, how many of us are proud of what we did this year? Oh, oh shit. Well, okay, then how, how many of us are proud of what the fuck we did a few months ago? Oh, well, what about what, what you did last month, last week, yesterday? I'm one of the few dudes who could answer. I am to all those questions. Why? Because I know it's not a one day thing. It's, you don't have your shit together for one day. And then the next day is fucked up and you take three weeks to get it together again. 
being on top of it goes on throughout the fucking year. And, and I don't need January to come around for me to make myself strive for perfection. I hardly ever make resolutions that are real. Most times I do it to be included in family activities or some activities of the friends and friends. Now, I made my resolve many years ago, and that was to never stop trying to reach for it, no matter what step I'm on. Even if it's 100 steps and I'm on step 99 uh, and I'm, I'm stepping up to 100, I'm still reaching for 101. I'm I'm a reach. I'm reaching. That's just how I roll. If you feel that you was blessed with good looks, intelligence, health, class, style, and a confidence like no other, then you must be a motherfucking pimp. <laughs> the, good, the good looks came when you realized you had a particular way you can look. Your intelligence allowed you to acknowledge you needed to look a certain way. Your health will allow you to chase that rainbow for years on end and never get tired. Your class will expose you to how, to all how proud you are to be in your position. Your style is going to become uniquely you, and people will notice. And all of this goddamn shit combined with you knowing you are a total package make you one confident and desired motherfucking man. The video... Or, or videos I make started in 2010. And I have to date maybe almost 350 of them. You know, all my videos are tied into my course. So, those of you who have some of them can really use the way you think to look uh, at the topics. Just use the way you think. Look at the topics that in my archives and choose the video that way. And you'll start seeing shit with totally different eyes. The, the reason my videos and confidence course are, you know, so on point, because the, the information is delivered in plain English. You can relate to the way I speak because I am you. And relating to me is easy. The icing on the cake is how much game I be spitting. Sure, it's entertaining, but I keep it real, and real is fun. Do yourself a motherfucking solid and treat yourself to some real this season. People say this shit is be you know beyond me, but this shit is real. We all possess the qualities to make somebody happy. We don't use them regularly, or why we don't use them regularly is beyond me. But this year, since we only got a little bit left, make a promise to yourself to extend some motherfucker a helping hand. I mean, even if it's just giving some homeless motherfucker a dollar. Just do the shit. You could volunteer in a soup kitchen for a weekend. I mean, whatever you want to do. Extend the hand to somebody who's less fortunate and see how good it makes you feel. It really, I mean, <laughs> makes me feel good. And it really ain't that difficult to grasp. You know, improvement awaits any person who's willing to improve. What I say won't be for most of you, but there are only a few that's going to read uh, what I write or see or hear what's being said. And to those of you that do, I, I salute the vision you're going to see in the future. It just takes time to develop that third eye. You have to have the third eye so that well, the third eye, these eyes see now. The eyes inside your mind see the past and the future. Your third eye puts all that together 
it gives you a direction. You need to develop that third eye because the cars, the jewelry, and all that other material shit won't last forever. And, and, and you, you know what will? Your fucking reputation. That's why you should protect it with that third eye. Don't get caught up in thinking life ain't gonna last. This will and all of the misdeeds you did will follow you. Just as everything you did straight legs will. You'll end up living it and loving it. Just like Bud. I live my life. Most everything I say won't be accepted by everyone. I know that. Only a few is going to see the vision and the value of thinking like a motherfucker like me. You ain't trying to be me. You just want to think like me. Shit, I wanted to think like Marvin Harris. To those few you know, who get this little shit, I, I'm telling you, I just hope I can have a, just an eye older to do with your success. I'm not jealous of you motherfuckers. I, I, continue, to, I continue to live through you motherfuckers. I really want you to be a monster at whatever you do until you think you had enough. Everything you do in this Abdallah is important. So don't make the mistake of thinking cars and jewels and clothes and all that bullshit is what it's about. It's really about your rep. Each and everything you do that's not right is going to follow you to every city you go to. And throughout that motherfucking journey, it's going to go into the history of this Abadabba, just as each and every straight up thing you do will too. You got to live for your years like where I'm at. You got you want your twilight days to be enjoyed and splendor. Whenever you look back and see what you did, you, you just are you just proud. Your reputation is really all you're gonna care about in the end. I some I somewhat feel for the unfortunate brothers who eat equate their value to the type of women they have. Your true value is based on how true you stated your beliefs about your life. A fine-ass woman can be a zero when it comes to being in your corner. And the big ugly bitch could be worth her weight in gold. It's all about what you deem your priorities. Don't make the mistake that beauty equals loyalty because you'll find beauty is a far cry from perfection or loyalty. The beautiful lady is just that, beautiful. Not so beautiful women not only have studied how to treat a man, but she try hard. And you know that motherfucking person in second place tries harder and the harder they try, the closer they get to being first. Shit. When I first turned out, I had a crew of mostly sevens. But every night they paid me, they felt like elevens. Because it ain't about how fine they are. It's about how much dough they bring. <laughs> Real talk. All right. I'm gone. This is a good episode, you guys. I love it. I love this shit. I love what Thank we be talking. Blog Talk Radio. And I, I would love for you motherfuckers to get my course. God damn it. I told you guys that uh, you ain't got to really buy into Sidewalk University if you don't. I was um, trying to get y'all to do that. But shit, you ain't got to buy into Sidewalk University. If you want the course without Sidewalk, get it. Go to uh, Rosebud Author and, and get whatever you want. Just understand, you ain't going to be learning everything that's in the shit without me. It, it, it's, it's just like that. I break it down in, in, in Sidewalk University. They, they might tell you to have a toolbox. But then me, I explain what the toolbox is, all the tools, how to use them, 
and what's best to use in this specific situation. I, I do all that. So you guys be cool. I'm out.